don't know where I get it.
yeah guys good morning good morning to all of you <clears throat> see we started uh, just a discussion on what really the major topics that we are going to discuss as part of the springboard with cloud microservices right okay so this is where actually you are going to work on in the industry now in industry right if you want to enter or if you want to survive in both so that everybody should have a very good and strong knowledge on the spring boot and microservices as well so guys yesterday just we focused on what really we are going to discuss uh, the path for the entire session so from where we are going to start and what we are going to look into in each of these i just gave some idea on what you are going to learn and what and even i also got information about what you are expecting from this session basically this is what okay this is a very important session guys and from today onwards we will be looking into the first part like why really we should go for a spring boot why this particular spring boot approach is provided by spring team that's what really we are going to look into somewhat in detail what exactly it is that is what our session for today guys let's move on let's talk about all so those guys who are just attending the session from today i would like to tell you that just <clears throat> these are the prerequisites in that uh, okay hibernate i can just tell you it's not a matter but so i mean it's not a must but you should have some basic sql knowledge that is mandatory and uh, i think all of you people who are attending spring boot and microservices session you people definitely have the knowledge of sql now i just written basics of uh, sql but i am expecting that you already have uh, some moderate knowledge on sql as well writing join queries or sub queries like that but here we don't require that much we require only basic queries like how you can able to write uh, the queries like uh, insert update delete select something like and a spring core knowledge is mandatory and this is must because uh, you know if you want to start creating applications using spring boot uh, if you don't have knowledge on basics of uh, spring that is the application context container or uh, some annotation like uh, at the read component or at the read service if you have no knowledge on that so then obviously it makes a problem if you don't know about auto wiring because in every application these are mandatory things that we need to discuss so that's the reason why i just added like this yesterday guys and uh, uh, you know yes uh, it takes for us to complete around 3 months because uh, we need to discuss lot of things and we also need to discuss all in a more practical way rather than in a theoretical way right uh, so that's reason, yeah Ashish, uh, good morning uh, yeah. just uh, cover uh, spring core also because mm. that spring core uh, uh, is very important when it comes to spring boot uh, actually so please cover uh, spring core some basics like uh, how containers are created what mm. is application context container bin factory just give a uh, brief idea actually Mm -hmm. yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And one thing actually, so when you start data JP, please uh, cover two important topics that is Hibernate generators and association mapping also. Mm -hmm. Data JP concept I'll teach with all association mappings like one to many, many to one, all, all, all those bidirectional and unidirectional everything. Else. Oh, sure. thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, so basically the thing is guys okay everyone uh, first let's focus on something sure let's focus on something about as the session is for spring boot i would like to tell you first of all why we should go for spring boot 
guys this is what first initially we want to start and once you got an idea of why we go for spring boot the reasons i'm going to tell you today and once you got this point for today then next in the session next we will start discussion of some spring core concepts how can you just define that these are called loosely coupled objects and how interfaces will help us in loose coupling between objects i'll give you an overview and once that is then we will start how the spring beans are created and what annotations used mostly annotations i'll cover because in spring boot we use all annotations only right so all annotations part i'll just uh, cover all the spring annotations all the basics that will be discussed first so that it will be helpful for everyone uh, who have learned long back or recently or if you are having only a little bit idea on them so it's just going to cover uh, multiple set of people and so that you'll be confident in next working with the spring boat let's move on guys first i would like to talk about why spring boat so as you all aware that uh, spring team has actually taken more time in releasing spring 4 and spring 5 versions uh, around you can find uh, after spring 4 uh, then maybe around after 3 years then spring 5 version got released the major reason like why is spring team is totally focused on spring boot applications or spring boot development the api development rather than spring development in between spring 4 and spring 5 okay let's have a discussion here First of all, we should we should start with our session on why really we need to go for Spring Boot. Yeah, I, uh, I would like to start our session to ask you a question that suppose because you are all aware of the Spring Framework, now I would like to ask you that. Uh, the question which I want to ask you is can I escape from configuration? This is my first question in Spring application. This is a question, guys. The question here is, can I escape from configuration in Spring application? That's what my question. What no. do you say? No. no. I'll say yes, uh, because a Spring Boot will configure it for you. Wait. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm just talking about a Spring application, uh, not Spring Boot application. No, we cannot. No. Yeah. We can't escape from configuration, actually, we need to do. Yeah. So basically, the first question the answer for the first question is, the answer is no. We can't escape from the configuration, but we have alternates. The answer is no. Right? Reason? Spring has actually provided different options to do the configuration. But you cannot escape from the configuration. See, for example, if, if you talk about configurations part, guys, so, you know, in Spring, you know, I can tell you something like this, guys. In Spring, you have different ways to do configuration, different options provided. The configuration options, I'll tell you first. The configuration options in Spring. One, you can just go with 
XML based configuration. And second, you can go with mixed configuration, means you can use some annotations. You know, basically to reduce the size of the XML, right? You can tell. You have some annotations. And the third, guys, I also, I can tell you that, yes, we have Java-based configuration. Java configuration class. These are the different options that we have. So basically, I just want to tell you that, uh, first of all, why do we need to do configuration? That's one more question I would like to ask you. We will come from the roots, okay? So my question here is, why do we need configuration? Why should I do the configuration, first of all? Because if you do any uh, like database operation, something like that, we need to uh, connect to database. Uh, for that, actually, we need some DB of uh, configurations we need, actually. Okay. To get the dependencies also. Whatever we required, we can uh, add those into our uh, XML files. Okay. Uh, uh, so spring configuration file. Actually, if you want to talk with the spring, spring configuration is the mediator. So uh, spring uh, container reads the spring configuration file and act accordingly. Okay. So yeah, yeah. And, and in my perspective, like uh, Spring knows uh, how to uh, connect to two different uh, components, but we should build in such a way that to what what which component has to communicate with which, which component. Mm -hmm. That kind of relationship we need to build. But rest of the part, the Spring will take care. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. Good. So. Yeah. Good. So I got uh, different answers from your end. So let's let's have uh, a, a bit discussion here. So see, uh, actually, as a developer, we should provide some instructions. We should provide some instructions to the Spring container, basically. Guys, listen to me clearly. As a developer, we should provide some instructions to the Spring container. So that based on our instructions, the Spring container creates objects. They are called Spring Beams. And also we'll add the dependencies while creating the objects or even after creating the objects, correct? Let me tell you that everybody should focus on here so that you will come to know about a lot of things. So if I ask about a question, the question is about, my question is all about, my question is all about, what is the advantage? Right? My question is all about what is the advantage of what is the advantage of the spring container? This is a question I would like to ask you guys. Yeah, the advantage is uh, we don't have to manage the objects. Spring will take care. Uh, yes. The so when you start the application, so a container will start, container will create the object and it will assign the object and uh, uh, and, and creates a bin also and that bin we can inject to another class. So everything taken care by container. Oh. We, don't uh, we don't have to uh, take care of uh, spring, uh, uh, the object life cycle or bin life cycle. Okay. Yeah, that is everything uh, controlled by container. Based on our requirement, 
uh, based on our requirement, it will guess that and it will uh, create the beans and it will manage it. Okay. Got Actually, like the management is given to somebody who can take care of everything. That's how the container will uh, play a role. Okay. Okay. So yeah, uh, basically what I can tell you is now see what is okay. Spring container is going to you know inject the dependencies so that we no need to write such code in our bin right to get the object to collect the the dependency object. That is one. But uh, basically the you know while creating an object, there is some complexity is there in creation of object as well. Say, for example, if that object creation needs another object, right? There is a, some complexity in creating an object. So basically those, whatever the complexities that are exist for creation of an object, say, for example, I have A, B, C, D, say four beams are there, where, for example, for creation of object uh, for a class B, then there is a class C object is required. And even for creating an object of class C, there is a class D object is required. So basically, if I am manually creating object, then I should take care of in order to create an object for my class B. So I'm responsible for first creating an object of class D, then class C, then I can able to create an object for class B. But whereas in Spring, the complexity that exists in creation of an object that is also taken care by the spring container itself. So basically it's uh, the, the main advantage that we can say with the spring container. Okay, it manages the life cycle. That's part of the container responsibilities. But it just not only creating objects, we can say that it high, it, it just takes care of the, the complexities that exist in creation of an object. That is also going to be taken care of by the spring container, right? So that's what uh, what we can say the answer for this. So if I read answer, that's better. So it not only just, guys, very important, okay? So we expect actually these type of answers uh, when we are, okay, when you are just, uh, you know, expecting, asking some questions for in interviews. It not just only creating, just creates or injects objects. Right? It not just only creates or injects objects. But it also Okay, hides the complexities of creating objects. So that's where basically uh, that we need to answer. Okay, that's good. So now guys, let's talk about why we should go to Spring Boot. I'm going to give you exactly the reasons like why we got the Spring Boot. That's what the first I would like to explain to all of you. Okay, let's move on, guys. Basically, what I say, there are different configuration options are available. You cannot escape from the configuration, but you have an option. So you can instruct the Spring container about your Spring Bean definitions by constructing an XML file. Otherwise, you can also instruct the Spring container by writing some annotations within the code and you can also write some configuration XML. That is actually called as a mixed configurations we say. And you can completely avoid writing the XML configurations with by creating as an alternate Java configuration classes. Right? These are all the different options that are available in the configuration of the Spring, Spring applications. 
so now let me talk about what happened here is uh, especially when you are creating when your application is an enterprise application where your application is making use of many third party libraries so configurations are definitely going to distract the developers from the thinking about the business problems are thinking about the solutions for the business problems because of heavy configurations are required in enterprise applications so basically because it involves lot of things like we may make use of uh, spring jpa in the data access layer and we also need to use some caching server http security right and so many things okay not only one or two there are multiple things and there is a kind of uh, uh, application needs to generate pdf reports excel reports chart reports so what happens when you think in that way it's an enterprise application where it's not a just simple application like creating a hello world application but when you think about an application which is an enterprise application having uh, making use of many third party libraries guys definitely i can tell you that a lot of configurations required and that configuration is basically distracting the developer from solving the business problem because more time is spent on the configurations resolving the configuration issues rather than the thinking about the solutions for the business problems so obviously uh, this definitely impacts on the productivity of the developers so this is where we need to think of this is one reason reason number one i'll write all the reasons at a time but let first let me talk about the one by one like why we should go for spring boot so our heading is why spring boot definitely i'm going to give you about all those reasons like three four reasons are there we will look at into all those three four reasons okay one is configurations part so where the most of the time most of the developers time is killed is on the configurations part and fixing the issues in configuration but not uh, thinking about solving the business problems so this definitely decreases the productivity of the developers that's the reason number one so let me write the reason number one so that you just you can you can think of how it's going to be guys see here guys number one i want to say that the one i would like to say is that so a lot of configuration is required more configurations required uh, in enterprise applications so in enterprise applications because spring is you know more popular for creating enterprise applications right both web and enterprise applications so you guys can you tell me what do you think about enterprise application means what do you think of enterprise application large scale applications sir anybody else uh, any anything else what do you what do you think about an enterprise application business, uh, provide services for business to customers yeah so can we call a telecom application or a banking application as an enterprise application guys yes sir okay then what web application is that is means uh, it provides services to customers as well as business also sir. There is two types of web applications. One is enterprise application. Second one is uh, distributed applications. Distributed applications are from business to business purpose only. Mm -hmm. Example for enterprise application is uh, Flipkart or uh, Amazon or something. 
which yeah. are enterprise applications, and then uh, distributed applications are uh, other card or uh, passport seva. These are distributed applications. Okay. Uh, but sir, Flipkart, no, Flipkart uh, is also B two C, na business to consumer. Hmm. That is not only B two B, B two C all as well. Hmm. Yeah. So think about this, everyone. I will give you the answer, but think about this first. Okay. Let's continue. And so, guys, you can see here developers are putting time and effort on. configurations but not on okay guys but not on the solving business problems okay so means here totally the time is wasted for the developer developers are putting their time putting their efforts okay on configurations because lot of configurations are required uh, now guys second i just want to tell you now the second reason i'll tell you why exactly spring boot see uh, suppose if you look at uh, suppose uh, there is an application started or we decided to create an application uh, it's a new application say for instance and uh, we decide that okay we want to use the spring version as say 4.x okay spring version 4.x guys everybody suppose we decide that okay we want to use spring 4.x version to start this application now and we started uh, searching for the dependencies uh, you know which are compatible with the spring 4.x version with other third party libraries because uh you know definitely when you come to applications development that is enterprise application development uh so applications just not only use spring apis but also uses some third party apis correct so entire application uh you know with without using the third party libraries only using spring libraries or spring api generally we don't uh, create applications Uh, definitely we application needs some third party libraries as well it may be like a uh, like kind of a i text api for pdf report generations or poi apis for excel generations like that okay so or j free chart for uh, you know creating the chart kind of reports or something like that. so basically okay we decide the spring 4.x right uh then tell me suppose uh, the spring 4.x is a version that we want to use to develop an application now it also need some third party libraries right maybe related to some documentation for the rest or maybe uh, you know like the pdf or maybe charts or something correct so now the point is first what should i do suppose or as a development team what the team has to do is they need to search for the compatible third party libraries the compatible versions of the third party libraries correct and which matches with the spring 4.x otherwise unnecessarily we are going to get uh, some kind of you know no such method exist exception or no def class def found error or maybe some null pointer exception we are going to face such kind of, if they are incompatible versions so the development team has to search for or i can say the better word like uh, the development team needs to hunt for you know the compatible third party libraries the versions of the libraries which matches with spring 4 so that's definitely takes some time it's a headache for the development team correct secondly guys uh, everybody just focus on what i'm trying to tell you say for example what happened uh, the application started maybe around a one or two months of development because the client also said that okay See, I also need this type of requirement because we are all following agile methodology, right? 
So always we accept and welcome the changes. So basically what the client says, okay, uh, let's go on with Spring 5, not Spring 4.x because I want reactive support. Right, okay, so I want a kind of a reactive kind of web application. I want a Spring reactive application. So then immediately what happened? Uh, with Spring 4.x, we can't do it. Then Spring 5.x is a version got changed. When the Spring version is upgraded, now the task is same for the development team. They need to hunt for, you know, for Spring 5.x then, which versions of the third party libraries are matched. When the Spring version is upgraded, even the third party libraries also need to be upgraded as a compatible versions. So in case uh, if the third party library is not upgraded, uh, which is compatible with the Spring 5, then we are just going to get some kind of exceptions at the runtime. So means what it's, it's very, it's more burden on the developer. At the same time, it's a big headache when, uh, you know, the versions of the spring is changed in the project. So that is one more issue that the developers are generally really going to face. It's a second issue, guys. I'm just going to talk about, this is what actually I call as a dependency management issue. As you all are aware of Maven and dependency, all these things. So I can tell you there's a dependencies management issue. Correct. I think you got my point. Can I expect that, guys? Can you give me a reply? Have you understood my point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah. I think hope you are clear with my point. Guys, let's move on. Yeah. So basically, this is the one, guys, that I would like to write here as a second point. For well, the second point I like to write here is that uh, I have given explanation, but I just want to write a point like it's a dependency management issue. Dependencies management. Right, yes, okay. So compatible version of dependencies are mandatory and uh, it's responsibility of the development team. So development team is responsible for hunting and finding the, the proper third party version of dependencies which matches with the spring version used in the project. So this is a big headache actually for the developers. So means basically what the developers are mostly focusing on configurations, dependencies management, but not on, uh, not focusing much on the providing solutions for the business problems. Correct? Okay, that's good. That's called dependencies management issue. Okay, so let's talk about the other reason, guys. The other reason I would like to tell you is that see uh, basically i'll give you a solution as a spring boot of course for whatever the reasons i'm explaining here for all these reasons the solution is our spring boot so when means you're understanding about why actually this approach a new model for developing applications guys i would like to tell you that spring boot is not a new framework using spring boot again we are developing spring applications only just it's a new approach and a new model to develop the applications Correct. Let's move on, guys. Everyone, try to understand what the point I'm saying here. See, uh, let me tell you something, guys, like this. See, yeah. Uh, you know, say, for example, my application is in dev environment, okay? Development environment. As you know that we have uh, different uh, project environments, right? A dev environment, test environment. U18 production. Basically, these are the four. See, in the dev environment, uh, 
Okay, there is guys uh, observe that here there is a dev environment. And say, for example, there is a test environment. And say there is UOT. And finally, production. I'm writing prod. Correct. See, in the dev environment, uh, I'm using database, say, MySQL. So basically what happens in the configurations, I used to add all the MySQL related uh, database configurations, the driver, URL, username, password, dialect, all such kind of things, right? But, uh, you know, for example, the QA team, they would like to test this on Oracle, not on MySQL. And coming to UAT people, say for example, they want to use DB2 to test it. And finally, when it comes to production, actually the production database is, say for example, Postgres. Okay. So thing is, when as a developer, we are using MySQL as a database. So we added all the application configuration on MySQL, right? The database configurations are made accordingly, uh, which can be used to connect with the MySQL. But when my application is moved on to test environment, QA team, they would like to test this application on Oracle, not on MySQL. So then again, application properties are need to be changed. The application configuration settings are need to be changed. And during this particular configuration changes, I can tell you, suppose if some properties are modified correctly and it's a developer responsibility because QO team says that, no, no, we are going to test it on Oracle, not on MySQL. But the development team has to is responsible to make such changes to the code. So during the configuration changes, if some changes are happened and done clearly, but maybe some changes are missed out, you have not done properly. Some properties are modified correctly, but some properties are unchanged. So then what happens, you know, your application is properly working in dev environment and you have unit tested it. But when it goes to QA team, it's not working for them. Means what, when applications moving from one environment to other environment, application configuration settings are also need to be changed. If this is a requirement. If they're all using uniform database, same database used, then no issue. But it's not going to be like that. So this is where you guys need to know what I would like to say. So when application is moving from one environment to the other environment, so application properties are also what? They are also need to be changed. So this, okay, is a big headache. Why? Because there are many configuration settings or they may be placed in different files. So if at one place, if they are modified correctly, if in other place they are not modified, then definitely guys, we are going to get an issue. This is going to be get a problem. That's for sure. And even uh, I, I just taken your database, but maybe really guys, uh, for example, you know, uh, in the dev environment, uh, say for example, I would like to write all the log statements on the console. Right. And I would like everything from debug level of logs because it's development. So I would like to get all the logs, including debugs. Correct. And when we go to test environment, they want only warnings and errors. These infos, or traces, debugs, 
those lab those labs are not required for test people curating they want to see only the warnings and errors that are occurred when up in application logs and when it comes to this eot they only want the errors and fatals start from errors and fatals only those the fatals which cannot be handled that is and uh, the serious errors and fatals only they want to see in the logs and they don't want to see any debugs or infos or wants are like that and okay in production also the same thing maybe so but the thing what you need to understand is these are the different log levels to be enabled right so some log settings required from any environment any environment log settings need to be changed and the database configuration settings they are also need to be changed and if you are not done properly if the changes are not done properly or changes are made at one file but not changed in other file then simply application is going to is not going to give us expected result so this is called actually we have a solution for this and that is what actually called as profiles management but okay in spring boot we are going to look into that the solution is profiles i'll explain about that but first you got the point here the the point here so the third reason i'll tell you is like first i'm talking about the reasons the third reason which i would like to explain to all of you is guys so when application is going to switch when application is a switching from one environment i am writing env to another env from one environment to other environment you know application configuration settings are also going to be changed if not done correctly or properly then it leads to application crash so basically i just want to write a big statement here hope you guys have understood my explanation but the point is a big point so this is the one more issue guys people now guys the other reason i would like to tell you now see uh, as you know when you are in real time uh the server is provided by operations team correct the server is provided by operations team and the simply the development team will deploy the application on the server which is provided by the operations team and test correct so it's not i'm talking about in your local machine that you have installed a tomcat and tested it okay right when you make you when you just have your features and when your code changes are merged to the uh, release branch so now if you want to integrate the code and if you want to test by deploying it on a server generally we used to work on that i'll tell you more clearly about this in the next we don't have that much time right now presently but if any server issues uh, for example not related to my application maybe server configuration issues or something like then the development team needs to wait for the issues that are resolved by the operations team maybe they they may respond after a long time
and basically guys i also want to tell you something that this is the one issue that is so we have something called configuration issues dependency issues right you know this kind of configuration settings if when you are moving from environment issues and the other uh, thing that i would like to say okay apart from this kind of you know dev and ops that's what devops right so developers operations are going to closely work together through devops so the fourth one which i would to say uh, and finally i just want to give a conclusion that why the spring boot is provided so basically uh, you know for example my application say for example now i'm a part of the production so and now i got an opportunity to work on production when my application is running in production suppose if i want to find some health checks and if i want to get some metrics metrics like memory related metrics or threads related metrics or sessions related metrics or any other kind of cache related metrics like that so just you know if i want to get some uh, i want to get some health checks and metrics of the project the health and metrics then you know uh, we do not have any such kind of uh, things provided in spring okay we can use uh, something like a jmx consoles we can integrate jmx with our application so that through jmx consoles we can able to find the metrics and health checks of the project but as a spring application developer using spring framework when you are doing that without integrating with the other jmx console or something else so you don't have any option to get them but whereas in spring boot of course we got it so in spring uh, at that time they have not included of course in spring boot the support is included but in spring so there is no way to get so no way is provided to get health and metrics of are these are called insights or inside details whatever you can say an application see these metrics only we can get while application is in running while it is running so now i can tell you guys uh, the solution for all these problems okay the solution for all these problems whatever that we have discussed here is what spring boot is so basically what spring boot says you focus on the providing solutions for the business problems and you just involve in the configurations very less almost zero configuration is required no configuration is required almost zero configuration very less configuration may be required but 99% not 90 99% the configurations are taken care by spring boot itself i'll tell you how does spring boot knows about which configurations are required to my project or to your project the discussion i will uh, we will start but basically what i would like to tell you is guys what spring boot says you no need of doing much configurations almost configurations are zero i will do the configuration you just you know just think about the solving business problems and improve the uh, the productivity it improves the productivity and coming to dependencies management the second issue here what we discuss guys so what says what the uh, what i can say what this particular the 
Spring Boot has provided here uh, a new set of dependencies. And uh, really, we are just calling them as starters. Spring Boot starters, we call S T A R T E R S, right? So, what Spring Boot says, uh, Spring Boot itself has provided some bundles or package of the third party libraries with the compatible versions for a particular type of Spring feature and uh, given us in the form of starters. And I'll, of course, explain about much in the next session. We have a discussion and continuation. So basically, first, I want to give you some theoretically good knowledge. And then we discuss more on practical. Initial days, we'll discuss a bit theoretically. Uh, then after that, then we discuss more practical things than theoretical things. So there is a new type of dependencies that you got in Spring Boot that is called Spring Boot Starters. You are going to know about the starter what it is in the next, uh, we are going to look into that. Third issue is there that is, as I said, uh, what happens now in Spring Boot, we have a concept called profiles. See, we create a dev profile, QA profile, UAT profile, and production profile. We create separate uh, configuration properties, nothing but the different files we create. So when application is in dev profile, uh, in the dev, when executing in dev environment, so dev profile is activated. And uh, in case if it is now moved to test environment, test profile is activated. No need of doing any changes explicitly in the code, just the profiles are created separately and they are activated based on the environment in which the application is going to run that environment specific properties are defined in a profile and that profile gets activated so now the developers no need to you know do the configuration changes at multiple places in the project and even we won't get an issue like uh, at one place the property got changed properly and at other place it's not changed properly because of profiles those profiles are supported in spring boot we have dev profile, we create one properties file. Uh, each profile you think like one properties file, you know about properties file already, dot properties. So test profile, that's called QO profile and UAT profile, finally production profile, something like that. And basically there is a concept called as a Spring Boot Actuator. I can call it as uh, that is a module in Spring Boot, which provides some URLs through which the production team can find the health checks and metrics of the application which is running. Like how many memory it's con how much memory it is consuming, how many threads are currently running, runnable, okay, how many threads are already dead, how many sessions created in how many of them are remaining and how many are already closed. So a lot of informations. So there are some URLs provided with the help of those web URLs. The production team can find out the health and metrics of the application while the application is in running. And that is called Spring Boot Actuator Module. So basically what I want to tell you, uh, the point which I want to write here is guys, I would like to write here is that, you know, the solution the solution for the above issues is spring boot approach for developing applications our spring boot is a model and approach otherwise we can say is a, is a spring boot approach use a Spring Boot approach for application development. Guys, so basically, uh, I just only uh, theoretically just discussed about uh, what the problems here and all, but you know, 
in a more understandable way and more deeper way, of course. That I'm just going to explain its continuation part. Okay, in the tomorrow session. And you got more theoretical today, tomorrow some theoretical and some practical like annotation. And why do we need main class? Okay, I, I just want to show something here, guys. Uh, that's spring.io when you open, you can find some Spring Boot features. So here we have projects, we have Spring Boot. And you can see here, creates standalone applications. We have embedded Tomcat, JT, under tau. No need to deploy the var files. We are going to see it next. Opinionated starter dependencies to simplify your build configurations. Automatically configure spring and third party libraries. Production ready features, metrics, health checks, and external configuration, and no requirement for XML configurations, right? This uh, is some of the features that they have listed out here. We will look at into them. I'll explain in our understandable way about the Spring Boot features that we are going to look into. So Spring Boot makes it easy to create standalone production grade Spring based applications that you can just run. The meaning of just run means you can just run like a normal Java application. So that is also going to be discussed. In the session tomorrow guys that's it for now now actually I, I would like to stop the session here and we will continue